What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to another edition of The Sharp Reality, a.k.a. TSR. Appreciate you guys watching here on a Saturday. Today, I'm going to talk about an article written by Amy Horton. I've actually done article breakdowns by Amy Horton before, and just looking at her catalog, it appears I'm going to be doing a lot more because she is she's going to be the poster child for what women should not do according to feminism. Anyway, so Amy, Amy Horton, a while back, wrote an article called, I'm panicking because I am getting older and there's no one left to date. Now, this is a very interesting article because... Amy, or Ms. Horton, went by what Rolla Tomasi likes to call the Sandbergian principle of dating and marriage. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that up here right now. So this is what Sheryl Sandberg advises young women to do in terms of their dating lives. She says, quote, when looking for a life partner, my advice to women is to date all of them. The bad boys, the cool boys, the commitment phobic boys, the crazy boys, but do not marry them. The things that make the bad boys sexy do not make them good husbands. When it comes time to settle down, find someone who wants an equal partner. Someone who thinks women should be smart, opinionated, and ambitious. Someone who values fairness and expects, or even better, wants to do his share in the home. These men exist, and trust me, over time, nothing is sexier. Well, Sheryl Sandberg is wrong on a lot of different things, but the thing that she is the most incorrect about is that is saying that over time, nothing is sexier than a man who wants an equal partner, a man who wants to share in his, his share in the household duties. No, that doesn't become sexier. It becomes necessary because the only men that are going to be available to women in their mid to late thirties who partied all through their twenties are going to be these kinds of men. This is what is called making a necessity or virtue. And I'll quote, I'll quote Rolo again. You're going to have to settle for these kinds of men. And because you're not going to have much of a choice. Oh, yes, I would love a man who wants an equal partner. I would love a man. No, these men are not attractive to you, nor will they ever be. But because you won't have much of a choice, you have to make your necessity a virtue. So let's go ahead and get started on uh, this particular article here. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here. There we go. There we go. I'm panicking because I'm getting older and there's no one left to date. Amy's run into a problem here, guys. She has run. She has followed the Sandbergian principle of dating and marriage for women, and she thinks there's no one left to date. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is solipsistic behavior. She's only thinking of herself, as most women do. There are plenty of men to date out there. There are men all around to date, right? But if you're in your 30s and men of value don't want a long-term relationship with you and they only want sex, of course you think that there, are, that, that there aren't men to date. They're running out of dating options. You are running out of dating options. The guys that are dateable, are not, they, they haven't gone anywhere. They just don't want you. This is how all girls are. If no guys are available to her, in her mind, well, there's just no one left to date. As if the guys are just no longer around, they just up and disappeared. No, 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 no. There are plenty of guys around. They're just not interested in her. So let's go ahead and get, let's go ahead and get started here. So the beginning of the article says, I don't worry, I didn't worry too much about re, about meeting the right guy immediately when I was younger. I thought it would happen in time and I had plenty of it. Now I'm in my 30s and single again, and I realize I should have found a good guy, then snapped him up. This is why I'm freaking out. The thing that stood out to me was when she said, didn't worry too much when I was younger, I had plenty of time. Young pretty girls in this country, they think they have all the time in the world. I did an episode a while back called Why Girls Choose to Stay Single, and one of the reasons is that they think they have time, and they do have time until, of course, they don't have time. Back in the day, guys, a woman who was single was single for a reason. Maybe she had some sort of disease. Maybe the word got out that she wasn't a virgin, meaning she had the scarlet letter of being uh, someone who was promiscuous, a tart or a floozy, as they used to call them back in the day. Maybe she was barren. Maybe she couldn't have children. Whatever the case was, a female who was unwed by the time she was in her early 20s and sometimes even younger was more or less looked down upon by the community. In 2019, the guys, things are literally the opposite. If a young woman gets engaged and let's say she's, I don't know, 20, 22 years old, everyone around her is confused as to why she's getting married at such a young age, right? Her friends ask her things like, well, why are you jumping into this? Or they'll ask her, you're still young. Why don't you just date around? Well, this is why Amy Horton is letting us know why, because if you do it long enough, 
You're going to wake up at 34 years old and wonder why the men who used to throw themselves at you only want sex from you with no commitment. Amy Horton is experiencing this right now because she thought she had all the time in the world. And now, of course, she does not. So let's take a look at the first bullet point she points out. Number one, my dating pool shrank before I even noticed. She says, I was in a serious relationship for a couple of years, and then I was taking my time to recover from the breakup. When I was finally ready to date again, I looked around and realized that I had a serious problem. Everyone I meet is either married in a committed relationship or someone I don't want to date. Yikes. Guys, she's being dishonest. When someone, when she says, quote, took time to recover, what this means is that she was having casual sex with a lot of guys in a short period of time. She wants us to think that she was a hermit and just stayed in the house. Oh, I need to recover from a breakup. She wants us to think that she just stayed holed up in her in her big city apartment, didn't do anything, didn't go anywhere, didn't hang out with friends, was just a hermit, just a hobbit. But guys, she was at the bars. She was at the club. She was going home with random guys just about every day of the week. She did it so long, she lost track of time. Girls say this all the time. They say, well, I haven't been in a relationship in three years. Well, what she wants you to think is that she's been sitting at home waiting for the right guy. What she's actually, what she has actually been doing during the time where she has quote unquote, not had a relationship, She's been sleeping with random guys, and it's easy for women to sleep with random guys here in 2019. It's almost, it's almost harder not to sleep with random guys than it is easy to sleep with guys, right? Then she says, someone you don't want to date, right? Everyone I meet is either married in a committed relationship or someone I don't want to date. No, no, the guy you rejected in your 20s is still unattractive to you right now. That's the guy she doesn't want to date. The closer you get to 40, the more attractive he will be, Amy. Trust and believe. Like I said, the guys didn't go anywhere. You just got older and less attractive, and that's what's happening. Let's go to her number two. She says, all the good guys I know are taken now. She says, quote, I used to know a lot. She says, I used to know tons of great dudes. Somewhere along the way, they all got snapped up, and the ones who don't, don't, and the ones who don't seem to be all that great. I know there have got to be some awesome single guys out there, but the number is definitely smaller than when I was younger. Tons of great dudes, she says. Translation, betas in waiting. You see, she ignored these tons of great dudes in her 20s to get with the bad boys. And again, she messed with the bad boys so long that those guys are now taken. And now she's mad that they didn't wait around for her to stop sleeping around with the bad boys. Yes, there are plenty of awesome single guys out there. But they're with the 23 and 24-year-old versions of Ms. Horton, not the 34-year-old Amy she is now. The number is smaller because of who you are, not because of the dating market. Well, the, but the number is definitely smaller now than it was younger. Again, this is that solipsistic mentality. The number, the number of men available to her has dwindled, so she must think, well, the number of men has just dwindled, period. No, the number of men have dwindled for you. Let's go to her third bullet point here. Says number three, let me pull this up here. Says it's not like before. Most people are caught up in serious relationships. She continues, before people broke up all the time, nothing seemed all that permanent. Now all around me, I see people who want to be settled down already. I'm the opposite. I'm just now finding my individual individuality and freedom and looking for another free spirit. Go figure. Again, this is solipsism. Everybody was in relationships when she was in her 20s. But you want to know why she wasn't paying attention? Because she was sleeping around. Free spirit, quote unquote, that's another name for a woman who is promiscuous, noncommittal, and doesn't have any steadfast beliefs. She's a party girl. Men of value don't want a, quote, free spirit. They don't want a woman who is unpredictable. You had all the free spirited men available to you when you were in your 20s, but now you realize that those free spirited men, the bad boys, are not good for long-term relationships, just like Sheryl Sandberg said. You can't have it both ways, sweetheart. And when she says, I'm just now finding my individuality and freedom, when she says just now finding, no, she's just now figuring out that maybe I shouldn't have partied all through my 20 years, or all through my, all through my twenties, like the world would have us believe is the right thing to do. The next thing she points out, everyone I know is getting married. It says, quote, granted, my friends back at home, back, back at home have been married forever. Some of them are even divorced or remarried. It's not the same out here in the big city. People take a little longer to make it official. Now I'm at the age where even my friends here are getting married and having kids. 
I feel like the odd man out because I don't want a family. Listen, men, when she says her friends have been married forever, they did it right. They got married young. They're with their husbands. They're not going anywhere. They have families. They're happy. She feels like the odd man out because she doesn't want a family. Listen, I agree with her. Listen, families aren't for everybody. But what she has to understand is that most men of value, they aren't going to get married to a woman who doesn't want a family. It's all cool and chic to say, well, I don't want a family, but at your age, you can't bitch about guys not wanting to date you because you don't want kids or a family. Number five, let's, let's uh, look at the, the fifth thing she pointed out. The only viable guys are younger or divorced. She says, quote, okay, that's not entirely true, but it's the majority. The younger dudes haven't committed to anyone yet, but I don't have a lot in common with most of them. Yeah, no shit. They're young, you're old. She continues, I don't have an issue dating a divorced guy. At least I know he's able to commit. On the other hand, the older we get, the more baggage we all have. This is a cold dose of reality in her face. Yes, the older you get, the more baggage you have. The only difference is, is baggage weighs down females more than it weighs down men. A man who comes with a lot of baggage is not as unattractive as a female who has a lot of baggage. Let's go back to the top of what she said. She says, well, the only viable guys are younger and divorced. Then she turns around and says, okay, so that's not entirely true. There you go, guys. That small little nugget of truth. No, 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 no. The viable guys don't want you. When she says, okay, that's not entirely true, but it's the majority. Yeah, she, listen, the viable guys don't want you anymore. She tried to pawn it off as only the young and divorced guys. No, 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 sweetheart. Only the damaged guys are available. That's how she wants to package it to us. No, sweetie, negative. It's the viable guys that don't want you. The men of value don't want you. The, the, listen, the only viable guys are younger and divorced is 100% BS. That, that's not the way it works. What you are finding out is that the viable guys that you want do not want you. Let's move to number six. She says, quote, dating a guy who is divorced and or has kids is a whole different ball game. She continues. There are definitely different issues that a divorced guy brings to the plate, she says. An ex-wife, for instance, and perhaps alimony or other legal issues. If he has kids, I hate to say it, but that's a deal breaker for me. I don't want kids, and I don't particularly want to take care of someone else's. This narrows my dating pool even more. Listen, to be fair, I can't blame her here. Like, I mean, listen, if, if you're a woman and you date a man who has an ex-wife and kids, you got to deal with the baby mama drama. The kids are a headache. You're not my mom. But guess what, Amy? You are going to have to compromise at some point if you don't want to be alone. And let's not pretend here. You are afraid of being alone. This is why you wrote this article. A deal breaker now isn't a deal breaker now for a woman isn't necessarily going to be a deal breaker in five years. So right now at 34 years old, I absolutely will not date a guy who has kids. Let's see what she says when she's 39. Number seven, my men, my age or older are still single for a reason. She says, yes, I'm single too. And that's also for a reason. I won't settle for just any guy. Oh, that's just so cute. She's single because the reason she is single the reason she's single are not the reasons that men her age are single. The reason men her age are still single is because they're still playing the field. Men her age are just now realizing their value, and they realize that they can be a little bit more selective. Amy is still single because men of value don't want to be with her anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, they'll use her for a role in the hay. They'll use her for one-night stands, but they don't want anything more than that. But she wants us to believe that, well, the reason I'm single is just because I won't settle for any guy. Yeah, whatever you have to tell yourself, sweetheart. She continues, maybe these guys are just too picky, but unfortunately, all too often there are different reasons for their perpetual bachelorhood. Sometimes they really don't want a committed relationship. Maybe they aren't emotionally available, or maybe they're married to their jobs. See, that's your problem. This is your problem, Amy. You won't settle for just any guy. What's happening here is your taste is too expensive for your budget. You want a $70,000 car, but you have $15,000 to spend. That's how this works. Now, here's the thing. In your 20s, you had that luxury. You had your pick of the $75,000 automobiles, but as time goes on, you don't have that luxury. Then she says, maybe these guys are too picky. Yeah, they're picky because they have options. And men with options rarely commit to females in their mid-30s who have notch count into the triple digits who are free spirits. Maybe this and maybe that. Well, maybe they aren't emotionally available. Maybe they're married to their jobs. Maybe they don't really want a committed relationship. Or maybe, Ms. Horton... You just need to understand that they don't want you. 
Women have to tell themselves these things to sleep at night. Okay, so guys don't want me anymore. Maybe they're not seeing who I really am. Maybe this, maybe that. No, they don't want you. And women don't want to have to come to that realization. Otherwise, they're going to have to take Ambien to sleep at night to keep themselves, you know, from, from staying up all night thinking about <laughs> thinking about being, the, you know, the, the 45-year-old perpetual cat lady. Let's move to number eight. Also, she says, most men my age or older wanted to start a family yesterday. I thought initially, she says, that I should date older men because if they've reached a certain age and don't have family, families yet, maybe they are like me. That's bullshit. Amy dated older guys because she was aroused by them. Dating older guys had nothing to do with a long-term relationship. She wants us to believe that she was thinking long-term by dating older guys. Maybe if I date older guys, maybe they don't want kids. Like, no, 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 sweetheart. No, 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 no. You weren't. You were in your party years, and the older guys were your drug. That's how this works. Let's continue. Maybe they want freedom instead of kids. What I found more often is that they were so invested in their careers. There we go again. They didn't notice how the years slipped by. Now they're looking to start a family immediately. They were invested in their careers. The years slipped by. No, 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 sweetie. No, no, no. For men, this was by design. These are men who get it. You get established. You get your education. You make money. You become financially stable. And then you start a family. For men, that was always the plan. What she is describing is a woman. Oh my God, I'm 37 and I've been married to my career. I need a baby and a family now. This is inverse projection. Men and women are different, sweetie. They don't think the same and they don't plan the same. Let's move to number nine. Oh, this is a funny one. It's so tough to find an available man who shares my interests. She says, I'll be the first to tell you. Hang on a second. I need to stop this. That's why this is getting delayed is because of this video on here. Just give me a second, guys. So she says it is it's so tough to find uh, so tough to find an available man who shares my interests. I'll be the first to tell you, she says, that I'm looking for something very specific and I know it won't be easy to find a man to fit the bill. Number one, you're 34 years old. You don't get to be specific. You don't get you don't get to be picky, sweetheart, right? This is not, it's not going to be tough. To, it, listen, it's not going to be tough to find a man who fits the bill. This is going to be impossible. Amy, Miss Horton, you're not 22 anymore. Listen, she's 34 years old. She's acting like she still has the options of a 21 year old. And she's wondering why these options aren't making them available to her. It's because you're 34. She continues. I don't even know where to meet them. To be honest, I guess I should just go sit out in the woods until I find my mountain man. Usually, when I do meet guys who pique my, pique my interest, <laughs> they're with their significant others. So finally, she finds a guy who piques her interest. They're with their significant others. Well, listen, one of the reasons they, speak, they pique your interest is because you can see that they are in relationships, and by design, you're more attracted to him because it's pre-selection. That's Red Pill 101. Amy still doesn't get it. Amy is looking for a man to compliment her instead of the other way around. Guys, I'm here to tell you. Ladies, I'm here to tell you. A man of value is not looking for a co-pilot. He's looking for a stewardess. A man of value is not looking for a co-captain or first mate. He's looking for a female deckhand. Looking for a man with, females in, with female interests is a fool's errand. The men you want don't have female interests, Ms. Horton. And the men who share your interests will not be attractive to you. Let's go to number 10. This is where she starts to panic a little. I meet so few potential options that I'm starting to genuinely worry. She continues, it could be a problem perpetuated by the area I live in, but what if it's not? See, right here. She's trying to hamster. Well, maybe it's not. Well, it can't be me. Maybe it's maybe it's a problem perpetuated by the area I live in, but what if it's not? Amy, it's not. She Right now, she's only at the point where she's starting to realize that Maybe it's not the city I live in. Maybe it's not the men. Maybe the problem is, well, me, right? She says, quote, I worry that I'll move somewhere new only to encounter the same issues. She's starting to understand that she's the problem. Of course, you're worried that you're going to move somewhere and get the same things. You're the same woman. This is, this is how it works. She continues. I simply don't click with a lot of guys. I never have, which is why I get, I, which is why I get, Overly excited when I meet someone I like. This is a typo. This is why she says, which is why she should have said why I don't get overly excited when I meet someone I like. Okay. 
Again, it's not the area, sweetie. It's you, right? Listen, Ms. Horton is a post-wall party girl who thinks that she should have the same options as a 20-year-old virgin. You should be worried. You don't click with a lot of guys? No, baby. A lot of guys don't click with you. When's the, Dude, when is this chick going to finally realize that she's the one with the problem? She keeps blaming, well, maybe men are married to their jobs. Maybe it's the area I live in. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. No, maybe it's you. Number 11. Let's go to uh, number 11. She says, sometimes I'm tempted to just give up and settle. I've never been one to give up on my standards, she says, but I'll admit the thought crosses my mind. Yeah, you're damn right it crosses your mind. It's getting kind of late. I've definitely settled in the past and it was terrible. That's bullshit. She did not settle in the past because she didn't have to. But now I feel like all of my viable options have passed me by while I wasn't paying attention. I'm afraid the longer I hold out, the more I'll have to settle later on. Guys, there's a nugget of truth here. She says, quote, but I feel like now all my viable options have passed me by while I wasn't paying attention. Translation, I had access to a lot of good guys who were willing to marry me in my 20s, but because I was sleeping with the bad boys, I wasn't paying attention. And now they don't want me anymore because I'm 34 years old and I'm all used up. I'm afraid the longer I hold out, the more, I, the, the more I'll have to settle later on. Yes, the older she gets, the more she'll have to lower her standards. Ms. Orton, you should have married that tall, good-looking rich guy who wanted to put a ring on it when you were 21, sweetie. Last and certainly not least, she finally decides she's going to let us in a little bit. I might have to accept my fate and die alone. I definitely want to find an amazing partner, she says. But I know that I know not everyone gets that in life. I'd rather be on my own than with someone I don't love deeply, despite that scared little voice in my brain that tells me to settle sometimes. The older I get, the less certain I feel that I'll meet my person eventually. It might not happen. Ms. Orton, it will not happen. That's just, listen, this is just all there is to it. Ladies, this is what happens when you take relationship advice from women. Women like Sheryl Sandberg and Amy Horton, they have led you astray. Amy Horton is living proof that you should that 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 you should look for a husband in your 20s, in your early 20s. Don't sleep around with all the bad boys and the cool boys and then wonder why now all of a sudden at 34, 35, 36 years old, these bad boys and cool boys only want to use you for sex. You will end up a 42-year-old spinster who gets passed around like a hot potato. Enjoy your cats, your wine, and your blog. Because, Ms. Horton, it will be all that you have left that matters to you. Thanks for watching.